Good morning. Thank you guys for watching and thank you for listening. This is the, I believe it's the fifth See the People Prospecting interview. And this is Cody with Secure Agent Mentor and secureagentmentor.com. Today, uh, and, and we do these every, every Wednesday where we, where, where we interview a successful insurance agent, someone that I know has been successful, someone that's good at prospecting, to give us some creative ideas, some things to think about, maybe something we never heard. Everyone was able to get from new to successful in a, in a different way or a different path. So today I'm going to introduce Ty James. Say hello, Mr. James. Hello. Ty is a my, one of my best friends, actually my brother-in-law, married my sister, and we have known each other. We went to high school together, played high school basketball together, played high school football together, went to college together, played room together in college, played basketball in college, uh, and now we are both and have been in the insurance business for almost six years or so. Uh, and so, Ty, before we kind of dive in and start to talk about your success in this business and how you've been one of the few agents that actually succeed, kind of tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I was uh, born and raised here in Missouri. I uh, grew up about uh, 60 miles uh, east of here, uh, in a little town called Mansfield, Missouri. I uh, graduated from a Christian school in 2009 with Cody. I uh, then attended uh, Baptist Bible College here in Springfield. I graduated there with a uh, business management uh, degree. Um, while I was in college, I uh, got married to uh, my wonderful wife, Kaylee, and uh, we uh, currently have two kids now. So you started in the bu this business while you were still in college. Yes, I did. What uh, What age were you? I was nineteen. Okay. Yeah. Wow. There's not a lot of uh, There's not a lot of agents that can say they started at nineteen and actually were mature enough and smart enough to actually make it in this business. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree. Okay. Well, how did you? Uh, so you got a you got a family. You got a couple kids. How old your kids for everybody? Uh, one is two, and one is about eight months. And they are a ton of fun. Boy and a girl. They love their Uncle Cody. <laughs> okay, well, let, tell us, how, how, did you, how did you end up in the business? Well, uh, about the end of my freshman year, I uh, started interning at an insurance office. Um, by the, I would say by the middle of my sophomore year, I uh, started uh, selling part-time, and then I went in full into it about the middle of my junior year of uh, college. I uh, worked there, I'd say, about three years uh, before I moved uh, and started as an independent agent with Secure Insurance Group, as I currently work with now, and have been with Secure Insurance Group about two years now. So you started at 19, you started in the business. Um, back when you started, I always ask all my agents this, back when you started, did you have a... Did you have a? I always, I always tell them all the agents you need to have you need to have a why, and even more important than just making a lot of money, you know, you've got to have a why, something that gets you out of bed, focused on succeeding in this business. What what was your why back when you first started? I would say I would say my why, and it's probably still true today, is just helping people make the best decision for them, their kids, and their grandkids their grandkids' future. Absolutely. I uh, read a deal once, a guy named Simon in the book, to start with why, says, we believe that every family has a story to tell, and it's our passion to help them protect that story. So I just sort of piggyback off of that, of helping people make the best decision for them, their kids, and their grandkids. I like that. So for the new agents out there that don't, don't think of this career as being a helpful service to someone, maybe they're not passionate about the product, maybe they're not sold on what they're actually selling, it sounds like you would agree that what we do actually benefits people, and it's important, and you're passionate about what we do. For sure. Okay, good. Has your why changed over the years? Uh, no, it hasn't. I've okay, good. I've stayed with just helping people. Good, good. I love that. Okay, excellent. Thank you for sharing that. So, so what did you, what did you, it's kind of, it's a broad question, you know, kind of an open-ended question. What did you do to be one of the few agents that actually succeed in this business? Well, the first thing, as we all know, I worked very hard. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of people. And, and not to interrupt you, but no, one thing, right. I, one thing I do want to mention while he says that is, at first sentence, he is absolutely right. He grew up out in Mansfield, Missouri. He grew up on a farm, uh, one of the hardest working people I know. And 
you know what? He didn't grow up in the insurance business. He didn't have a sales background at all. But the reason Ty has succeeded, and I know he's fixing to get into that, is he simply had the attitude and the mindset that I'm going to outwork everyone else that does this, and that's one of the, and he's learned along the way, don't get me wrong, and he's a phenomenal salesman now, but he just simply had the attitude and the mindset that he's going to outwork everyone that he sees. So sorry to interrupt. But oh, you're all right. You're all right. It's just a lot, you know, a lot of people take insurance as a way to, I guess you say, feel free, um, show up when they want, leave when they want, um, especially mm-hmm. as a new agent. Right. Uh, but the real truth is if you want to stay in the business, you have to put more time in than just you know, 30 hours a week, 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week, you need to give it all you have. Um, And, you know, and then you'll see, you'll see more of the benefits. And uh, to me, too many people give up before they start benefiting from their clients. Mm -hmm. So what I would say was, what do you mean by that? Certain before they start to benefit from their clients? I I understand. I know what you mean. But for the, for those new agents, well, a lot of people though, for the first you know, let's say a year or so, you're in it, you're you're just showing up when you want, you're not really, you're just getting a few clients here and there, you're not making it in the business, so then you have to, you're searching other, you know, you're searching, you're trying to find other places to work, mm-hmm. you're not, you're not focused in, you know, making any I, money. I love that word. So, you know, People that actually stay in the business, two or three, you should start seeing the benefits of renewals. You start mm-hmm. seeing the benefits of cross-selling now your clients. You start seeing referrals from clients. And so I believe the longer you're in it, the more you're going to benefit from it. I so. completely agree. It's, it's funny how the longer you're in the business, the easier this business becomes. Yeah, so I, if you just work hard, show up ready to work, and work long hours and never give up. I I think that's your that would be the main focus. There. That's the mindset to have. Yeah, if, the, if those, those are some fantastic qualities that if you if you haven't adopted those as a new or struggling agent listening out there, if you haven't adopted those, think why haven't you adopted those? Are you not sold on what you do? Are you not passionate about what you do? Um, so so think about those and absolutely in, in, incorporate those into your practice, as Ty says. So t- so Ty, tell us. Back when you first started, this is kind of the toughest part is the seeing the people. A lot of agents struggle with consistently seeing enough people to succeed. How did you consistently see the people? Dial, dial, dial. Uh, Got to call a lot of people. Um, I went door to door on people turning 65, just you say cold door knocking just anybody we went we went door knocking a lot and not to not to interrupt again i just kind of chime in here and there but ty every time this is this is a it's a wild statistic every time he has went and door knocked a list of people turning 65 where it's a list of 20 25 30 names every time he's ever went and knocked maybe he didn't sell something that exact day but he's always sold a Medicare product from that day of door knocking. Is that still is that still accurate? That's so true. Wow, that's strong. That's strong. And we'll I'm, I'm going to make a note here to that. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and do it before you before you finish your paragraph. What uh, what did you what do you say? I know we're kind of getting off track here, but what do you say when you go up to the door? Because you've had a lot of success door knocking Medicare. On the Medicare part, I always make sure I have a a nice little brochure to give them. I uh, just, you know, nicely step by. I I already know their name, you know, sort of when they're turning 65. And so when I go up to the door, you know, I say, hey, this is, you know, my name's Ty James. I'm with the Secure Insurance Group. I know you've got a birthday coming up in July. I was just hoping to step in for a few minutes and uh, talk to you about your your Medicare options. And they're going to tell me that they already have it or they're not interested. Mm-hmm. And if they're not interested at the time, I know they will be here in a few months, so I go ahead and, you know, I try to make sure I give them that uh, brochure because if I, I believe if you have a good brochure, they're going to give you a call back because, you know, we have a lot of options here at Secure Insurance Group on selling Medicare supplements. Anything they're going to buy they're going to let it buy from you. Is that, is that right? Yeah. So, and, and it's kind of funny that you say, uh, you know what, they, they may say they're not interested, 
but you, you, you've progressed enough in this business to realize that when people say they're not interested, it doesn't mean that they're, that they're not interested. It's just like an initial complaint, you know, or, or, or an initial rebuttal just because they don't know enough information to actually be interested, or it's maybe they're not ready to talk about that yet, but it's some, you're right, at some point in the future they will always be interested in that because they have to be. It's yeah. just a time in their life where they have to make a decision. They don't really have a choice. <laughs> even, even not doing anything, it's a horrible decision, but it's still a decision. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay. So, so how many... Uh, did did, did I uh, did you get to finish? How many, how did you consistently see the people? I don't think you did, did you? Um. Well, like I said, I just you know I went door to door. Um, a big deal is like I called every list I I could sort of get my hands on. Yeah. You know, we would get you would go. I, we have a program called List Shack. Go on there and get your list. Just start calling. Um. I called a couple hours. One of my big deal is is Cody knows this. He was very good at doing it. Is calling a couple hours uh, every single night, getting ready for the next couple of days. Um, now, when I say a couple hours every night, that that was at work, not at home. And I, I'm, you know, I believe that <laughs> it's people say they're going to go home and and dial. It just never gets done. Too many distractions at the home play. You got too many honeydew lists or something like that. Yeah. So I believe, you know, that was a big thing. Is calling every couple out couple hours every night really helped me to get my appointment. I like that. Excellent. So so you, you, we, we've learned how you consistently see the people, you know, whether it was calling, door knocking, or market, you know, whatever it may be. How many did you see each week? Did, did you think about it to where, hey, I want to <clears throat> see so many people a week? Appointment-wise, uh, I would like to see between 10 to 12 people every week. I love that you say that. I like tell I say this on every prospecting interview and a lot of our insurance training calls is that for all the new agents and struggling agents, it sounds like it sounds like Ty would strongly agree with me. If you don't see five people in this business consistently a week, if you can't get in front of five every week, you're going to fail. If you can get in front of five or more, you'll do good. But the agents that do great and, and succeed at this business at an early age or early on in their career always consistently find a way to see ten people. Yeah, and I I agree because now, you know, I might not see 10 to 12 people because I might only see 6 to 7, but I'm selling those 6 to 7. Whereas when I first started, I had to see 10 to 12 to sell 2 or 3 because, you know, I just wasn't at one product, one plan, one price. Exactly. You're captive. And and so that that always gave me about uh about two appointments a day, so. Okay. And what what products did you sell starting out? What was your focus? Uh starting out I would say I mainly sold final expense whole life product. Uh, okay. Something I hardly made any money on. Easy to sell. Yeah, we we made thirty five percent. Thirty five percent commission. Thirty five percent, and we're still here. We succeeded. And, and <laughs> if we can, anybody can. And <laughs> Medicare supplements. I sold. You know, I would sell Medicare supplements. Okay. And is that? Uh, is there a product that you enjoyed selling more back then, or was it just a, or is it just a, well, and the captive company we started out with, they really wanted us to learn the business on selling life insurance, because if they knew you could sell life insurance at a captive shop, you'd better make it in this business no matter what you sold, you know, just because that's that's the toughest thing to sell in the business, especially yeah. especially if you're captive, is just selling life insurance with only one product and price. That was the deal with Medicare supplements. It's one of those things, they, they have to have something and if you were there, you know, they if you could present it well enough, they were gonna buy it from you. Where life insurance is a you know, more of a tougher sell on that point. Absolutely. Now back when you first started, did you fact find? Did you have a fact finding process at all? Uh fact fact finding is uh something I actually did not do uh very well at all. It makes two uh, never well enough. Maybe. To be truthful, when I first started I can tell you, though, uh, <clears throat> since I began, I guess you could say, fact-finding, I've uh, ran into things I didn't have any clue. You know, my clients even had a, a safe money account annuity over here or a uh, IRA. You know, a lot of things I didn't know until I started fact-finding. I will say for any new agents or even experienced agents um, that are listening, that uh, the new fact finder that uh, Cody has made 
is a uh, a very great tool to use. I've uh, it's it just rolled out here about a month ago. Thank I've, you for mentioning that. I've I've got to use it about uh, once or twice already, and so it is very good on you know showing the exact things we need to do on the fact find. You won't find a better one out there. And I, I know I know I've built and put a lot of focus into it, but I did have a lot of help from other agents. Even Ty came to me and said, "Hey." It looks great, but we should incorporate asking, building, at, making sure we've built value and asking for referrals at the end of our fact-finding process. That needs to become a part of our system. And you know what? If they don't think they received value and if we don't get referrals, you know, that, that that's just makes it tougher for us to succeed. So, yeah, Ty uh, added a huge proponent to that. And so, yeah, it's a phenomenal fact-finder. It's a ridiculous tool that our agents are seeing a ton of success from. So, uh, back when you first started, did you set any goals, any short-term goals, any long-term goals? Did you, did you have any goals per se back when you were a new agent? Uh, my short-term goals, uh, I know we were talking, me and Cody's uh, short-term goals were a little bit different, and, but my short-term goal was to always, when I first started out, was to always sell Ten policies a month. Um, that gave me an average of about 120 a year, and so you know 120 new clients every single year. Well, in five years, you know, if I kept you know a majority of those, I was setting out about 500 clients. Absolutely. So that's sort of what I was shooting for on that short-term goal. Uh, my long-term goal. I got a lot of long-term goals, but uh, to keep it short on my long-term goal is. Uh, I'm a strong believer on renewals, and my long-term goal has always been to have 10000 every month coming in on renewals, um, coming in every month. So. And I'll tell you that uh, it won't be too long, too many years, and he will be, he will be at that long-term goal. Um, I, I love to talk about goals, and I love to always ask if, if individuals have goals, and it's very rare to find someone that, that succeeded that didn't actually set goals. It's funny how that works, that actually setting goals, you're able to hit, get results and actually hit your numbers and succeed much easier. Um, now, how much, uh, how much money did you make your first full year? My first full year, like I said, I, my first full year I started, I was a uh, junior. Mm -hmm. um, my end of my junior year there in college, my first full year I made 60000 Wow. That's ex that's extremely good. Most new agents, uh, you know, can't say that. And to say we were getting, we, to say we were getting stupid low commission and only had one product to pitch, and to to still make that kind of money is actually rare in that captive hostage environment. You know, it is. That's, yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's we, a fantastic that would, first year. Yeah. Uh, so walk us back. You know, we've heard kind of how you've seen people, how you consistently saw people, what type of people you saw, how many people you saw, what kind of products you sold, um, what your goals were back then. Walk us back. Walk us through your week back as a new agent. What did you do on a daily basis? What did your week look like? Well, uh, first things first, you know, I'd get a good night's sleep but, and then come in. I would come in early, get ready for my appointments that day. Like I said, I would try to have, you know, around two appointments a day, so I wanted to make sure I was ready for those. I would then uh, follow up, check emails, and uh, if, like I said, if I had a time before my appointments, I would uh, get on that list, do some cold calling, call some friends, try to get some more appointments set up if I could. My goal was always 10 to 12, but if I had 14, that would, you know, <laughs> it ain't that, that was a good thing. And... Uh, if he knew he had 14 or 15, who knew he was having a, having a freaking monster, monster week? Yeah. You know, and that, that just helped me get ready for my call time at nighttime. I would run my appointments, and then I would call there at night. So It's crazy to think about uh, how many appointments we ran back then and how, if you run that many appointments, how much money you're going to make here. Because back then, we probably averaged – a couple hundred dollars an appointment, you know, yeah. whether we ran, whether we made or sell or not, you know, if we ran 10 appointments, 10 appointments, we were probably going to make a couple grand, you know, somewhere around there, maybe, maybe even a little lower. Um, we're here, 
our agents in our local mentorship program are averaging $693 of submitted commissions per appointment. Not per sale, but just per appointment. So if they ran 10 appointments, they're probably going to submit almost seven grand because we're getting Commission double the triple higher. the commission. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's awesome. Uh, so your business seems to have transitioned so far. Um, you know, you're probably, maybe you're focusing more on Medicare. I know you're focusing more on renewals. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Why would you say that's more of your focus? Um, the more focus on the Medicare supplements is uh, more the renewal part of it. Okay. I want to be able to build the renewal, but then also be able to pitch with them life insurance, long-term care. Absolutely. And now that you know, I've started doing a lot more fact finding. Now that I fact find, I can see where they have it. They might need uh, auto insurance for our auto, our auto guy here. They might need, um, you know, something to look at on their old annuity or safe money yeah, account. Absolutely, and which so, we've got a retirement safe money specialist here. In so our one office. Medicare supplement client turns into four different products. I it's such an easy. It's such an easy product to get people to get in front of people about. You know, I mean, they have to have it, you know, so a lot of agents will use that as an easy end, and it's it's a good way to just get in front of people and then use, not only are you building a long-term career and long-term renewals, as Ty mentioned, but you're also fact-finding, you know, and, and you're cross-selling and you're solidifying them as a client. The more products you have in the home, the more loyal they're going to be, you know, and yeah. it's just easier it's going to be to keep them, and so, yeah, I I, I can see why... Not only is it helping met the Medicare market, it's so, it's so good for your sh for your short term. But it's also so good for a long term, you know. And, and you do a great job of, of focusing on that area. Thank you. Now, for all of our listeners, um, what do you do now, and and, and and what's your focus now? Okay. Well, uh, like we hit on now, you know, I do really really focus and sell, you know, a lot of Medicare supplements. I sell. Um, I've here the last couple of years. I've started selling Medicare Advantage plans, just to sort of hit every market. Just Absolutely. so when I go into a house, you know, I I can I sell the Medicare supplement right. if, if possible because that's the plans I like better. But if not, we set up another appointment and come in for the Medicare Advantage. Absolutely, yeah. But uh, that's that's been what you know I've done a lot now is start focusing on them renewals. Now, how are you? How are you getting in front of, obviously, a lot of it's, you've got a good block of business now. You know, you've got several hundred clients that you're able to work and contact. And I, I will mention this. No one is better at servicing and staying in front of their clients and actually communicating with their clients than this guy. We are polar opposites when it comes to actually servicing and keeping in contact with your clients. What's kind of your, I know it's not something we plan on talking about, but how are you how are you staying in front of them like that? How are you servicing them? How are you? Well, uh, on my on my clients, am I sort of the follow up? Yeah, I guess you could say. Yeah. Okay. Well, like Cody said, I I really do believe that my uh, you know my best attribute is you know the following up, the getting back to the clients, the. Um, I honestly I I don't know if it's true or not. But, uh, you know, I, fo I focus almost on that as much as I do selling um, because I feel like you can sell, you can get the client, but if you leave the client sitting there and you never get back with them, they're just going to go away. No, I completely agree with so that. I really do. your sale just turned into nothing. And, like I said, my renewals are the biggest sale, so I want to keep those clients. I want to keep them right there. I'm always on their mind. Um, a lot of things what I do is I'll try to call them on their birthday. If, I, if I'm if i busy or I can't do something, I'll, I'll definitely get a, a letter out to them. Um, I try to, you know, call people on, like, the renewal dates. So if someone okay. has a one-year anniversary. Okay, okay. Um, let's say wow. they're... You don't hear that a lot in the business. They are bought it from me in June. I'll try to call them the next... Make sure I call them that next June, go over their policy with them. Okay. Um, if they're if they're a Medicare supplement client, this is a huge thing. Some clients, you know, some agents don't do this, and this is how you can come in, 
we have a Medicare supplement client, if you're wanting to know how to do that, is if, you know, if they're your Medicare supplement client, always, always make sure you call them 45 days before their effective date. If their effective date's in June, make sure you call them April 15th, go over the new prices. With Secure Insurance mm -hmm. Group, you'll be able to do this. You'll be able to see different, you know, different uh, companies, look at them. Even if it's a dollar or two, you know, you tell them their option, let them choose, because in the all, you know, you're just you're just there for them, but you need to help them through that process. And, and back to back to service for a second. You're uh, we want to make, and this is we want to make big claims. You know, we want we want to make big hooks. You know, we want we want them to think that hey, if you want someone that's going to be there the long term and it's actually going to service you right and actually communicate with you, you, you need me. You know, in in a way, and so that's the way kind of ran your business and you've used that almost as a selling feature it sounds like yeah it, and because people love that yeah you get I've got referrals you know and that's how you can build that referral base you're keeping long long longevity clients that's gonna stay with you um, he's got some other service things he does too I wanted to hit on too for a second okay um, I do I do send out a a lot of people do this but I do send out a, a quarterly letter okay. um, just trying to stay you know get them you know, like when that. I've had a kid or pictures of our new kids. Now, now when I call someone, they're like, "Oh, you know, how old's the kids? Or how's the kids doing?" Yeah. It just keeps them keeps them feeling like they're your friend. Absolutely, you're building that relationship. And you know, that goes back to what I said before about you know just help, helping people make you know the best decisions for them, their kids, and their grandkids. They sort of feel like they're you know in there with me, and I'm helping them. That's awesome. Um, I, another deal, I don't know if Cody's mentioned this before or not. Um, I know he's used it before in the past. And uh, I, I use, to keep up with my client management, I use Radius Bob. Hey, and I'm going to throw a little hook out there. We've got a discount with Radius. I, yeah. won't, I won't share the actual discount, but we have a discount with Radius that is phenomenal. It is awesome. Ty actually found Radius. We talked to the, the owner. His name's Clue from Vegas. And they are perfect for the insurance market. It, I mean, it is extremely well priced. And when we were looking, you know, I was we was looking for something that was going to be not as expensive as the you know the big the big boys that they think they have to be so expensive because no one's going to think someone that's you know low on price is going to be very good. But anything that we've ever done with Radius, you know, they keep up. With everything, everything that we've we had on our check mark list, they have it on there. So I use them as a great tool. I can run all my reports on them. So you can track renewals, you can run everything. reports, you can track all your clients, you can run reports on all the clients with effective dates of next June for like like when you contact. Yeah. Um, you can send you can text messages, text messages, email marketing. I mean everything. It's you can print out list to mail them. You can print out email list to email blast. It's just it's crazy. It's so robust. And we've got a we've got a twenty percent discount. Um, I'll we'll, we'll share it. I, I always want people to contact us, obviously. But it's normally twenty four dollars, I believe, and we actually get a month, and we actually get our agents are able to get it for nineteen dollars a month because they're associated with Secure Insurance Group, and it's robust. It is awesome. If you're not using it, number one, if you're using a CRM, I know you're paying more than nineteen dollars a month. It's oh, just yeah. not possible. It's just it's just you know not possible to pay such a low amount. Um, but what we've seen, especially the sales forces of the world, whether it's a couple of grand a year and all this, you know, and if, if it does just as much, you know, and it's so so well priced, you know, they've they've actually built it for people like us. Yeah, they, the, the they were guy, when we got with guy. them, they had just sort of started their business, and uh, they've even took advice from yeah. you and us in they've, the past, you know, things to add and things to tweak and. They they do it. And they'll work with us if there's some you know if there's something that we someone sees and would like you know we'll we just call them up and they sort of they'll see what they can do. But uh, you become a VIP customer, baby. <laughs> we've got we've got, we've got so many reps with them that uh, they've got a business without us. No, I don't know if that's true, but it's kind of funny. We do have a lot of reps using them. It's an awesome tool. I'd say I'd say one of the big deals too about keeping up with people is make sure you make sure one thing I've always done is. Send a thank you card when mm. you run an appointment. Even that is strong. The big deal is, is even if they don't, you know, if even if they don't buy, 
I believe you should still send a thank you card for at least, you know, their time that they took to meet with you because there's many times where you'll send a thank you card even if they didn't buy and then a month or two down the road some, a family member dies and you're the first one they're calling. So, I love that. I've always sent thank you cards when I make a sale. I never thought of that's where the service comes in. That's why that's why that's why I mentioned Ty's got more of that service mentality, which is what you need to build a long term block and, and actually stay in contact with your clients. I never thought of actually saying, Hey, thanks for your time. I really enjoyed visiting with you. I appreciate the opportunity and hope to earn your business in the future. You know, I just I, that's awesome. That's freaking that's strong. That's strong. Write that down. What what else do you do for service? Anything else? No, I think that's probably okay. about it. Okay, good. Quite wow. There's probably other stuff you were probably not thinking about, but yeah, Ty does a lot for his clients. Services them well. If you want to be, a, if you want to be, if you want to build a block and you want to get referrals and you want to have long term success, you've got to have that creative service mindset. That hey, I'm just not here to sell everyone. Which to be honest, that was my mindset when I first started. I'm not going to lie, but it has changed over the years, and I'm just. Yeah, Extremely thankful to learn from phenomenal agents, including Ty. Um, so, so what? Uh, so we've talked about your focus. We talked about your, your follow up. We talked about you know some different things. Something we didn't that I kind of skipped for a second because I wanted to, we were talking and I want to jump ahead. How do you how do you prospect now? What are kind of your prospecting avenues? And I'm sure you have a few of them. As yeah, we all, as we all do. I mean, it, it's it's. It's changed since when I uh, first uh, became an agent, which, you know, it'll change forever. As it should, because you don't yeah. want a cold call forever. Yeah, and, it, and it, it will change. A lot of people, you know, they get in a business, like, uh, you know, a lot of you will get in a business and just think this is, you know, the worst thing and <laughs> worst thing ever because you might go on 10 appointments and only make one sale. But I think, you know, if you just stick with it, it'll work out. So now... You know, I am benefiting. I, I do a lot of cross-selling uh, with my clients. I, uh, I'll i still go to door-to-door. Do you contact and pitch them, other, pitch them other products or tell them about other services that you offer? What I do is when I follow up and I talk to them, I first, you know, call them on their birthday. I just actually got done. Uh, do you start out by thanking them? Thanking them, yeah, thank you for your business and just want to tell you, you know, happy birthday or uh, like this morning, I actually just got off the phone with a couple people, um, thanking them for their one year that they had been with me. Right. And so after I got done thanking them for their one year, anytime I get done with a birthday, one year, even when I'm talking to a supplement client, I always make sure that I ask them, hey, is there anything else I can do for you? You know, have you thought about any life insurance you know, lately, yeah. just to pitch it in their ear. Who's your life insurance with right now? That's, and, that's awesome because that's a way, believe it or not, that almost counts. I mean, technically it's not an appointment, but it's it's a semi-appointment because you're asking them, you know, about and, other products. You and know, and ways to get in front of them. To me, to give you a, to give you a quick example, uh, last week I called a, a, a lady and, uh, you know, I thanked them for their business and she said, thank you. And we got off the phone. It was about a 45-second conversation. Well, I didn't know this, but her husband was in the room with her, and she couldn't say it out loud because he was in the room. So, And I didn't know none of this. She calls me back about, you know, I asked her, was there anything else I could do for her? And, you know, she simply said no and thank, thank me for calling. About two and a half hours later, I get a call from her saying that, uh, she wanted to get some more uh, – she really thought that her husband needed to get some life insurance on him due to the fact that his health is getting bad. Mm-hmm. And so wow. I was like, well, we're going to have to get him on the phone and, you know, set the appointment and get it, get it done. So That's the awesome. thing is that she was just sort of scared to tell, say it in front of him because, you know, she didn't want him to feel bad. And so just because I had planted that seed, letting her know she was not a life insurance customer, she was a Medicare supplement customer that she bought, they bought some life insurance. I do a lot of cross-selling. I still do some door-to-door, turning 65. I'll buy leads every now and then. Um, I do, one thing I've tried to do a lot, and I've actually got quite a bit of businesses, is is prospecting prospecting by social media. Okay. Um, Example, um, Facebook, you know, you got all these friends, 
you've got all these people you haven't seen in a long time, maybe you graduated or something, um, I'll message uh, all my friends um, that's not in the insurance world yeah. at, at least once a month uh, just to keep them on their mind, keep me on their mind. And then uh, I'll post on Facebook uh, publicly just to keep people remembering what I do because I feel like a lot of people, as you, you know, as I'm a young agent, a lot of people, you know, sometimes when you're in the business, even for a year or two, they might not think you're going to stick with it. So as long as you're planting that seed that you're still doing it, you're uh, still loving true. it, you're still making money, then, they, you know, you might not get someone your first year, you might not get them their third year, but you will eventually – Pick those people up. That comes back to making those big claims. Hey, I'm going to be here long term. Exactly. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to be here. One thing that I, uh, one thing that that Ty uh, that Ty just mentioned is that you know I, I just recently had a story that uh, I had not been putting stuff on social media at all. You know, until the last several months. Well, I started to now. Um, just about insurance in general and recruiting and about supporting agents and mentoring agents and all these insurance training and prospecting training and interviews and all that. And I just had a um, cl- a, uh, a friend of mine he just messaged me on Facebook. It was about health insurance, which I don't do individual health insurance, but we have someone that does. But they probably thought of me or Ty when it happens to him because – you're staying in front of them. It's like a billboard or a radio ad, you know, or a piece of mail or all these other things that you do. When when something comes up, who is the first person that they're going to think about? And that's strong, you know. It's just like you're just staying in front of them, you know. You just you, you want to own that mental real estate. When they think of a product or they think of insurance, who are they going to think about? I, I just feel like if if you're putting it out there, they know who you are, what you're doing. Because people forget, I forget all the time of what someone might do or I might need something done and I can't, you know, I don't remember who's who, but if I if they were posting all the time or doing that, I would re- I would most likely remember. Yeah. You cycled through the news feed enough and saw them talking about it, it would eventually, you know, you would eventually start to think of them as that person, that go-to. And one thing, I, I, will, I will say this um, just because, you know, I've ran in it, you know, in the past, I always make sure, now some people might be different, but one thing I've always done is made sure I don't post too much. I don't want to like over post it because you, we all have those people on Facebook or, or Twitter or LinkedIn that just post and post and you almost want to just defriend them or get them off your page just because you're tired of seeing their stuff. You're not interested. So don't be that guy that just, you know, bothers everybody every yeah. every day. You gotta just, sprinkle in some yeah, just, just some actual personality and yeah. actual human you know, you not, know put, not just business. Put photos of, of you know, your kids, your family, your your friends, you out having fun. Yeah. And then post something about insurance on a on a weekday that you're in the office mm-hmm. and working just to keep people updated. So I, try, I definitely try to do that on my prospecting now. So, so what do you do did, well, back when you started, did you try to improve yourself as a salesman? Back, well, back then, did you try to improve, and are, and are you still trying to improve now? We'll kind of throw two questions at you. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I proved myself uh, by, I guess you'd say, uh, reading books. I don't, I'm not always a big guy on reading uh, books, but I would always make sure I, you know, I some odd reason, I always check out the chapters, look at them, and then sort of pick out which ones I want to read. I know that's probably not the best deal, but that's sort of what kept me going on reading. Um, Cody was always good at doing the audio books. Um, as he mentioned, we're brother-in-law, so he always would print, out, print, out, print us out an audio book, so we'd always listen to that on the, on the road or something. So I always did that. Turning that car into a mobile okay. sales university. And then I feel like one deal I'm improving myself is listening to other agents. Um, mm. Not like us. Yeah, not agents, for, to me, not agents that just began in the business. Um, not agents that are saying, you know, this, you know, this sucks, I want to go find another job. <laughs> Talking to agents that, you know, had success in the business, had success, 
to give you an example, we had an, an agent on a uh, that did a lot of Medicare supplements, a lot of Medicare supplements, and they sold and they had a lot of renewals. So that was my passion. That's what I wanted to do. So what did I do? I went to him and I learned a lot of stuff. And so that's how I I did a lot of my improving by listening to other salespeople. That yeah. had success. I was just watching Millionaire Mentor with Kevin Harrington and Grant Cardone last night, and yeah, they talk about finding a mentor to learn from, someone to learn from, someone to ask questions, someone to you know kind of pattern your business after, and, and you know, and eventually, Ty's gonna his mentor. He's gonna be mentoring his mentor before long. But you know what? That's that's part of life. That's a cycle. <laughs> I'll say now uh, what I've been trying to focus on is. Uh, Making sure I uh, do sales training videos every month just to stay up on the new products, the new, you know, the new ways to sell. There's always something new out there on any, everything. So trying to do that and uh, just to make sure I, you know, stay updated on the laws and the products on that. So that's so you, so you read some books. Improve myself. Listen to some audio books. Those were back then. Um, still do some of that today, I'm sure. Now you're focusing on... Um, new things that come out that can help you be more beneficial to your clients. Exactly. So, everyone you talk to that's ever had success in this business, they've learned before they succeeded. You know? And so if you're out there, you're new, you're struggling, even if you're experienced, if you're not learning and advancing, you are retreating. How long would you be in, in the NBA if you didn't practice? You know? It wouldn't take long, and you'd be in the D-League. It wouldn't take long, and you'd be playing over in Europe. It wouldn't be long, and you'd be sitting on your couch. You know, I mean, that's just part of it. You know, I mean, so uh, make sure you make sure you're improving. Now, for all the for all the new agents, the struggling agents that that are listening uh, later on YouTube, what advice would you give for in, for being able to consistently get out there and see the people? I would uh, I would work hard. Um, my biggest deal is, I would say, is don't be afraid of, don't be afraid to call, don't be afraid of the phone. Um, Fear of rejection causes a exactly, lot of agents. Exactly. Don't, don't be afraid, you know, for someone to tell you no. I promise mm -hmm. you, it's gonna happen. And and your I would, skill will eventually become greater than your fear it, at some point. And you know, a lot of people on the on the door knocking, someone will tell them no or be rude with them, and they sort of shut down and they're done. You know, don't just let it brush by you and go to the next one. There's always someone out there that can use your services. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, my big thing is don't be afraid to call. Don't be afraid of someone to tell you no. Um, I would set a couple, like I said earlier, if it was me, I would set a couple hours every day uh, that you're going to call. Okay. Um, put it on your calendar every single day. This is the time I'm going to call. You know, if it's uh, friendly or friends, family, mm -hmm. cold calling in general or leads, I would do that. I would, uh, I would, if it was me uh, when I first started, I would actually set a day out to go uh, um, door knock. As a as a new agent, you might, you know, you're probably going to be a little scared. Yeah. And that's the whole purpose. You can only wet your pants once. That's the whole purpose of going door knocking is to get you in the game. Eat. Instead of calling someone on the phone and them telling you no and you're like, okay, and you hang up, now that you're in front of them and they're telling you no, you have to work. At how are you going to take it? Are you just going to walk away? Are you going to keep talking? And so you might, have, you might not have no success at door knocking. It might, it might not have no success at all, but I promise you, you'll come out of there knowing more things. Yeah, you know, you'll by, get, by doing it. You'll, you'll, you're, you'll get better at doing it. Every time you do it, you'll get better. You'll learn to overcome objections and actually get exactly. get in home. That's the big one. Overcoming objections is the big one on the door knocking part of it. And another deal, if I was a newer agent, I, I would buy a, a few leads uh, to fill in the gaps. Mm -hmm. And the biggest one of all, and uh, I hadn't even wrote this down, just thought of it, is, um, and I forgot to write it down, is... Don't be afraid to call your friends mm. and family. Mm. Dwell on that for a second with me. Most people, you know what? A lot of agents, I remember my first call to my warm market. The manager, I told him, dude, I'm like sweating over here. 
I'm like, you know, I probably probably had to change my drawers a couple times. I didn't want to call my warm market. And he said, okay, who's the person that you don't, you know, that you least want to call? I picked out the name. He picked up the phone, dialed the number, and handed me the phone, you know. And you know what? Ever since that day, I've been thankful and I've remembered that because, believe it or not, the woman that I wanted to call the least was actually receptive, actually thanked me for calling her, was happy to hear I was in the business, let me come over, and I sold her. You know, it's like they know you, they care about you, they're not going to be rude. Pick up the phone and call them. Yeah, that, you know? That's a big one. Um, luckily, I, you know, I had done a little calling of my friends and family, and then about my you know, second year is when I just poured on heavy. I, I, I was ready to make money, and I didn't. You care. were sold on what you did, and you were passionate about it. You were, you were, you were serious, and you weren't scared to call anybody. You know, exactly. I mean, so it's just. I will. I will mention this. I know we're probably running over time here, but I will. I will mention this. Um, that what? Let's say you're at a barbecue grill. If you're complaining about your work. Then you start getting where you're selling some and you're making a little money. Well, guess what? Those people that you already talked about, you know, that you don't like your work, that's all they have in their mind. Yeah. So that is one thing that I always made sure I, you know, I, I might I might have done it to my wife when I was younger. You know, oh, man, yeah. you know, this is, I got to, you know, I got to work harder or this or that. But I never made my family, friends, anybody know that, you know, times might have been hard when I first started. So make sure you, my biggest deal is I want to, you know, make sure you don't do that. Make sure that, you know, you don't have to be over success and, you know, and act like you're everything. But just make sure that, yeah, I'm doing good. I, I love my work. I, yeah. I love my work and, I, you know, I plan on being there a long time. And just be positive. That'll, that. that'll stick in their head. It really will. Now, if you had to pick one word, this is hard. Gosh, there's tons of words we could use. If you had to pick one word to define your success so far, what would it be? I would say happiness. Okay. Okay. Why? Why happiness? Well, because every every time I I hit a goal, I every time, of course, I haven't hit my long term goals yet. But every time I hit my goal or I'm going throughout life and I succeed at something, it makes me happy. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I set that goal. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I achieved the goal. And so my success, it just... That makes a lot of sense. Makes me more, it just makes me happy. A lot of people have different deals, but my deal, it does make me happy to succeed in hitting my goals that I, I choose. Yeah. No, I, I love that. Yeah, because then you, you're, you're happy and, and you're positive and you enjoy your, your work and your career. And then you look forward to setting the next goal, so you can slay it. Because you know? if you, if my deal is, if you if you're not happy at work, it <laughs> kind of lean on to yourself. It's yeah. gonna, when you not go to make that home. appointment, we all we all know that you know happiness is definitely a uh, a big deal. No question. Okay. Now, is there anything else that you'd like to share that we haven't talked about that we haven't mentioned that you feel is important? Uh, one thing, uh, my manager back. Uh, when I had worked on the other entrance uh, places, one thing that always stuck with me is put in, put the time in, and everything else will fall in place. Mm. The big thing he said was, you know, always plant the seed, and you will get business. More seeds you plant, the more business you're going to get. So if you plant, you go door knocking, you call those hundred people. You're planting a seed, and business mm-hmm. will come out of it. So that's the only thing I will say that I've always sort of stuck with me is plant the seed. I love that. Now, if, if agents have questions, if agents have questions, can they reach out to you and ask you questions via email maybe? Would yeah. you be cool with that? Yeah, you, you can uh, uh, contact me on my email at tyjamessecure at gmail.com. It's, uh, it's T-Y and then J-A-M-E-S, secure, S-E-C-U-R-E at gmail.com. TyJamesSecure at gmail.com. Let's look at that. That email's blowing up as it is already. He's got that. That's awesome. Good. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Yeah. Well, anything else you'd like to add before we conclude? I think that's it. I appreciate you giving me the time to come in. Thank you very much. I, I know that our agents will get some uh, extremely creative ideas, ways to service people. Ty has been extremely successful in the business. He gets more successful every day. 
We're very grateful and thankful that you were able to join us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Well, get out there, see the people, go see 10 people. Make big claims, service people well, think about ways to prospect, get out and see the people. Thank you guys for joining our fifth See the People interview, prospecting interview with Ty James from Secure Insurance Group. Thanks again for listening. If you have any questions, please, please, please reach out to one of us, either of us, tyjamessecure at gmail.com or uh, cody.askins at secureig.com. Please, please, please ask us questions. We are here to help. Uh, Thanks again for joining. This is Cody with Secure Agent Mentor and secureagentmentor.com. We will talk to you very soon. Go see the people.